Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in lovely Lauderdale by the sea. A little bit rainy today, but always lovely in a 72 degrees out, so can't beat the weather. Not that cold. Well, let's see what's happening here. First, I'll start out with my screenshot here. $50 silver prices soon? Eh, let's wait and talk about this in a few minutes, but first let's get to the news here. Um, hey, what's going on out there? I think it's going to be a really quiet day. Everybody yesterday, the big Super Bowl day, uh, I didn't even know who won because I don't watch Super Bowls. I'm not a big football fan, never have been. Um, uh, but that's just me. I hope everyone that did watch the game yesterday did enjoy it uh, because it's one of America's favorite pastimes. Uh, and they got to combine two pastimes together. And the reason I think it's going to be very slow today is because we had one of our favorite pastimes that happens once a year, which is the Super Bowl. And the second favorite pastime, which probably was overindulgent on, was this. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a feeling that that's why it's going to be a sleepy market here today, Monday, at least in the United States. Uh, it was a rough day for everybody. You know, if you're a football fan, and I guess it uh, sounds like the Bucks won, uh, and you're a Kansas City fan, it was a rough day for you. Uh, but still... Uh, it still was a nice day, I guess, for everyone because they could just drown their sorrows and all their favorite things. Anyway, let's move along away from that and move into some news here. Uh, state legislators set ice sound money reforms. This is in Zero Hedge. Uh, one of my favorite little morning reads. I'd recommend that you read Zero Hedge too. Um, I, I, I am not uh, supported by Zero Hedge. They don't uh, send me any money for doing this. Uh, I'm not uh, sponsored by them. Uh, however, I have been reading them for many years and I find that uh, their news blog, and when I say news blog, is they have all kinds of different opinions from different kind of sources and, and different places. Some bullshit, some great. Uh, which is unlike most of the mass media, corporate media that we read that feeds us stuff. They just... You can read everything in one headline. I mean, they just feed us what they want us to hear. Uh, the nice thing I like about Zero Hedge is it has all different types of opinions, and they're not just feeding us one viewpoint, uh, which is a beautiful thing. Anyways, uh, I have the uh, version where you pay a dollar a day for it, uh, but you can read Zero Hedge for free. Like I said, it's a great uh, little news hub to uh, keep in touch with uh, different opinions. Uh, state legislature, I sound money reforms. Uh, more state lawmakers than ever are introducing sound money legislation in the opening days of the 2021 legislative sessions. I have a feeling that uh, uh, while our uh, federal government gets dumber and dumber and dumber, uh, either party, both parties, over the time, I'm hoping that the citizens of the states will start taking over local mayor's offices, local commission offices, uh, uh, local representatives, governors, uh, I'm hoping that the people start taking over the state and local governments more than we have in the past. Uh, because right now we've lost control of the federal government and your next best bet is taking control of the state governments. Anyways, several states will consider measures to remove sales or general excise taxes from the purchase of gold, silver, and other precious metals. Well, that's great. Uh, my father uh, and myself, I, I helped out, uh, William Youngerman, uh, Larry Lee, uh, uh, Nick Hauser, all coin dealers from the state of Florida, um, uh, many, many years ago, we had sales tax removed uh, on Florida. We actually helped write the sales tax bill um, and got sales tax removed from uh, U.S. coins and bullion purchases. Uh, so sales, uh, Florida is very lucky as far as sales tax, and you can thank uh, these guys, you know, again, as the guys that I mentioned, uh, for getting rid of state sales tax, along with some other people that helped out and other coin dealers in the state of Florida that helped out and donated money and spent their time making phone calls. Uh, Florida is pretty lucky. We have a sales... Uh, all uh, uh, all bullion sales are exempt of sales tax in Florida over five hundred dollars. Every all bullion sales, all U.S. coin sales. Uh, so any United States coin is exempt. That's even old stuff from the 1870s and 80s is exempt from sales tax. Uh, so we're pretty lucky in Florida. But some states have to pay the full sales tax. They have to pay comp if sales tax on everything, coins, bullion, you name it, everything across the board. Uh, and unfortunately. Now with the internet and the federal government uh, getting involved, uh, now there's state across there's taxes across state lines. So now they're collecting sales tax from. Uh, uh, you, you no longer can order something online from another state and and, and not pay sales tax. Uh, they've screwed that part of the constitution. Now they're collecting taxes across state lines, which is completely unconstitutional. But the federal government and a lot of states never worried about the constitution. That's just a little uh, a speed bump as far as they're concerned. So anyway, let's move along. Uh, some states are doing the right thing. Here's a rundown of newly introduced produces state legislation. In Mississippi, House Bill 375, sponsored by Harry Zuber, 
uh, uh, includes language to exempt precious metals from sales tax. Is that great? That's great. Uh, South Carolina looks like it's going to do the same. Arkansas, Alabama, uh, Hawaii, which is unusual because that's kind of a blue state. Washington state removed sales tax against money decades ago. But uh, lawmakers hope to take it a step further. And uh, it looks like a lot of states are... Uh, are going to get rid of sales tax on precious metals. That's a really good thing, you know. Uh, uh, so that's good for uh, silver and gold people. Uh, fortunately, now there are now about 39 states that have removed some or all of sales tax from precious metals. And again, Florida being one of them, and we did this years and years and years ago. Uh, that's why I think, folks, it's important for everyday regular folks to take control of local uh, uh, political office and uh, offices uh, and state political offices. Uh, now's a great time to get involved with politics. If you've thought about it and uh, you're, you're fiscally conservative uh, and a conservative person and you do the right thing, now is a great time to think about getting involved with local politics. Uh, let's move along to uh, GATA, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. These are the guys that have been for years and years and years explaining to us and telling us how gold and silver is manipulated. Not just like tinfoil hat people uh, sitting in their mother's garage making shit up. Uh, these guys are the real stuff, man. Uh, and they have a lot of great articles in there. Uh, this was kind of interesting. Agora's French newsletter notes Gata's work exposing gold price uh, suppression. Uh, French journalist Edouard Fravol takes a note of Gata's work in a report this month for Agora's publication, French newsletter, La Chronique. Uh, I think that's it, La Chronique Agora. Uh, Fravol writes... Uh, thanks to a Google translator, because I did try to read the article. Uh, the sudden changes in the price of paper gold could give credence to the thesis of the Gold Antitrust Committee, an American association that has been claiming for more than 20 years that serotypous interventions that are carried out in the market by the guardians of the dollar in order to discourage gold, hoarding of gold. This is absolutely true. God has been pointing that out, that the manipulation of gold and silver market is not uh, just corporations. It is government control. And if you start to read more of what Ted Butler talks about and uh, uh, take a look at more of these, uh, GA, again, go to GATA.org. If you're a gold and silver buyer, this has to be on your radar here, this website right here, uh, GATA.org. Uh, take a look at that. Look at that article. You know, once a week, take a look at it, and uh, you'll be smarter than the average bear and smarter than most gold and silver buyers. Um, but anyways, to go down here, whether deliberate or not, the official listing of the precious metal is in fact largely determined by a few banks. Well, this is absolutely true. Uh, on one hand, we find those who are members of the London Bullion Market Association in London, an organization that sets the price twice a day. Uh, yeah, especially in the morning when you see gold and silver get really monkey hammered. That's, uh, that's the London boys for you folks. On the other hand, there are large financial institutions on Wall Street, which are known to intervene massively in the New York futures market on behalf of state and commercial clients or on their own account. Uh, so here, here's a keyword, state. On the behalf of state clients. Uh, so, and, and the U.S. government is actively involved in suppressing the price of gold because they don't want to see large amounts of dollars moving into gold. Uh, trust me, it happens. It's not tinfoil hat uh, uh, conspiracy shit. you got to read GAT.org. Uh, start following Ted Butler's stuff, too. Uh, and, of course, the game is rigged. Every market is rigged. Every market you play in, even elections seem to be rigged nowadays, but every market you play in is rigged. But the, the real thing is, of course it's rigged, but if you don't play, you can't win. And if you know how it's rigged, you can become a winner. And we are winners, folks, because we know how it's rigged. We're not in denial about it. Uh, we know exactly what's happening and how it's going to happen. And that's why you listen to my show, and that's why you read GATA.org once a week. Uh, and if you don't, that's your new homework. Let's take a look at uh, uh, the 24-hour uh, chart here on, uh, on the gold to silver ratio because we're going to start paying attention to that gold and silver ratio once again. And there goes my phone's ringing off the hook again. It's going to be one of those days for the people that didn't overdo it last night. <laughs> uh, let's take, again, 24-hour uh, gold and silver ratio. Look at that blip in the morning right there. There's London for you. Boom, bang, right right back down. I like, we, we were at one time as high as 110 to 1. The ratio is kind of dropping slowly. This shows me that the two metals are kind of uh, tightening up with each other. Is silver uh, too, is silver too cheap or is gold too expensive? Well, I am still in the camp that, well, here's, let me first say this, that we are sitting in a gold to silver ratio that is pretty typical of the last 30 years. Uh, and, and we only really see 
the gold and silver ratio get down below this level when we've been in some really big bull markets. And the last big bull market we were in was 2011. I think the gold and silver ratio got as low as 30 to 1 or, or somewhere 30, the high 30s to 1 in that range. Uh, however, um, uh, that was just during that particular bull market. So the question you ask on this, is uh, gold too expensive or is silver too cheap? Or are they both right where they should be and they'll start moving up in tandem? Well, I'm still in the belief that gold had made that big, massive climb last year. And silver really uh, made a pretty decent climb as well. Uh, but I still think silver has some room to move up. And we'll probably see this uh, uh, gold to silver ratio uh, tighten up and get a little bit lower down here uh, as we go. You see this line right here that I got my cursor on? I expect to see this over time to do this. Uh, and follow this trend until we get into that bull market, which you'll see a big line drop straight down like that, uh, and then, then you're in bubble territory, in my opinion. And will silver and gold get into bubble territory? Of course they will. At some point they will. All markets get overheated and get into bubble territory. Um, anyways, let's move on to the actual spot prices. It did exactly what I thought it would do last Friday when I did my morning report. A little bit stronger on Friday uh, and open a little bit better on, uh, I hope it did, I, I'm going to refresh the screen, <laughs> make sure I'm still right, uh, and it looks like it is, uh, yeah, we got a stronger open still, look at that silver price, I mean, it's great, uh, 1832.95 on silver, basically 1833, and uh, silver at 2750, um, you know, we had that little Reddit rumor that uh, drove a small percentage of people into silver, which gave silver a high percentage gain, like three bucks in a overnight almost uh, until the next morning until people figured out it was kind of a rumor uh, but no less we did get a percentage of people to start looking at silver Wall Street Journal did a full page on silver whatever you call what happened last week with the little reddit rumor for silver and the, that price jump that three dollar blip no matter what you call it it was great publicity for silver fantastic Wall Street Journal did full page ads I'm seeing it in the media and more and more people are starting to realize that markets are manipulated um, I don't think that will scare people out of markets in fact if anything it's proven that these reddit guys are not afraid of manipulators why because of course the game is rigged but they know how it's rigged and they're playing their game against them and that's exactly what we're doing with gold and silver markets uh, so anyway let's take a look at the range here uh, on silver, uh, let's take a look, 2689, 2756. Silver's holding its own really nice. I think we're going to see that bop above, above 30 bucks, not too far in the distant future here. Uh, premiums are certainly causing silver to be over $30 uh, because there really is no product available uh, for less than 30 bucks an ounce, physical product. You can buy all the paper you want at these prices you're seeing right here. But uh, try to go out and buy real silver right now. And again, folks, the, uh, the scarcity of uh, uh, silver and gold right now, it's, it's still a little tough to source. It seems to be freeing up a little bit. Uh, but it's kind of an odd time to uh, have a scarcity in uh, uh, gold and silver product. It really is. Uh, anyways, uh, we'll see what happens this week if the premiums come down. I'm hoping they are. Uh, so let's take a look at platinum as well, 1168. It kind of is decoupled from everything. Platinum is just doing its own thing, kind of like palladium does. Um, so what do I think? I think we're going to stay around this level. Nothing crazy today. It's one of those quiet, sleepy days. Why? Because it was Super Bowl yesterday, and uh, everybody's uh, got their hangovers. <laughs> and let's take a look here. Uh, where am I going from here? Well, not too far. It's going to be a really quick report today. Um, I think, uh, again, we're going to see uh, prices stay about this 2750 range, uh, give or take 10 or 15 cents. And I think silver is going to, I mean, gold is going to, again, stay in this 1825 to $1835 range for the rest of the day. Uh, tomorrow brings a whole different uh, uh, day. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as sleepy as it is today just because, of, you know, it's kind of a semi-holiday uh, the day after the Super Bowl. So... Uh, let's take a look and see what happens today. If anything crazy happens, I will uh, come back and do another report. If not, I think we're going to just see status quo, what we're, the numbers we're looking at for the rest of the day. And tomorrow, uh, I think we're going to see up prices. I really do. Uh, there just seems to be some strength in the market. Uh, but that really depends on whether we see the dollar up or down, too. Remember, the dollar has a lot to do with uh, metals prices. Uh, so if the dollar is really strong uh, in early in the morning, you're going to see metal prices kind of get somewhat monkey hammered. But remember... Dollar strength is only temporary. It cannot last forever, and it will not last forever. It is a fiat currency, 
in fiat currencies just eventually decline in their buying power and their value. Uh, so in the medium and long term, uh, don't worry about dollar strength. It's just a blip on the map. Well, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins, getting ready to start my day and answer phones and sell a lot of gold and bullion and silver bullion products out there. Uh, still, the best deal out there is 90%, and it seems to be available right now. Uh, so you can get 90%. I have access to uh, one-ounce bars, 100-ounce uh, bars. I have no access to 10-ounce bars right now for some strange reason. Um, have access to plenty of silver eagles, but I think they're overpriced, and I'd rather not sell them to you. If the premiums are still in that 8 to $10 range, I'm, I'm just going to tell you I won't. <laughs> I can't sell them to you. I just can't do it with good. You're going to have to ask me three times before I agree to sell them to you. Uh, I am kind of like the eagle Nazi, like uh, like the soup Nazi from Seinfeld. Uh, <laughs> no eagles for you. Uh, but if the eagle prices start coming back down less than six buck premium, which is still way too high, uh, five, four bucks, I'll start pulling the silver eagles out and selling them to you. Anyways, uh, give me a call if you got any questions at 954-493-8811. We're open 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays. And thanks for watching these videos. I notice my viewership is slowly climbing and uh, my, my subscribers are slowly climbing. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe and uh, like button up there and you'll get updates on my reports every day. And if I do a, a second update later in the day, you'll get that as well. Hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great Monday and uh, give me a call if you've got any questions and I'll talk to you soon.